Christmas is usually a time of love, a time of peace, and a time of happiness, where everyone shares gifts and eats a big dinner together. I'm not gonna lie, I took the mall Santa job because I needed money, but seeing all those smiling children asking me for presents made me much happier than I thought I'd be. In those moments of happiness, I didn't think my life was at risk. I never thought I would meet someone who never enjoyed Christmas. That day was not unlike the previous days I had spent at the mall. The children would turn away from their parents when they were a few feet away from me and join the line to come with me. As cheerful as they were, they all asked me for the same thing. A bicycle, a video game console, or a dollhouse. All things that parents could get in this very mall. Of course, there were some kids who asked for weird things. I remember on that day, one kid was asking me for a live dinosaur so he could raise it in his backyard. Normally I would have laughed inside, but something else was occupying my attention. While the boy was talking to me, I couldn't take my eyes off a man standing a few feet away, looking at me impatiently from behind a pillar. The man was very tall and thin. His eyes were tiny, so tiny that they seemed to be lost in his huge cratered face. Although it was obvious he was there, he watched me as if I didn't see him. At first, I thought his gaze was filled with hatred. But as I got a better look, I realized it wasn't that. He was anxious and impatient. But why? What did this man want from me? Santa! Santa! Are you listening? Oh, I'm sorry, son. Of course. What else do you want? I also want a big cave so I can keep the dinosaur. I got so distracted I forgot I was still with a child. When I finished listening to him and looked up again, the man behind the pillar was gone. I looked around and he seemed to be gone. A few hours later, I had finished my shift and was going to change. Have you ever wondered what's inside all those doors in the mall that only authorized personnel can go through? Inside are the hallways connecting all the stores in the mall, along with private restrooms and maintenance areas. I entered through one of the doors and went to one of the locker rooms to change. I sat down and tried to take off my fake Santa Claus beard, but before I could do so, someone opened the door. It was the man who was watching me earlier. The man was peeking through my door, watching me like he was watching me before behind the pillar. Timidly, he entered the room and closed the door, still watching me with an obsessive but timid look. Hey, what are you doing here? This is for authorized personnel only. You work here? Hey, Santa. <laughs> is this where you came from before you went to the North Pole? What? What are you talking about? Do you think... You haven't heard what I want for Christmas yet. When he got close to me, I noticed a lot of things I didn't notice before. His clothes were full of condiments. His hair was badly groomed. And his look. I knew that look. I had seen it many times. It was the look of a child. The man was behaving like a child. Before I could draw any more conclusions, the man sat down on my knees without giving me time to react. Once on top of me, he slowly brought his face close to mine and began to speak. I'm sorry I came all this way, Santa Claus. All the kids always look at me funny in the line. Besides, I wanted you all to myself. <laughs> uh, yes, I understand. Well, what do you want for Christmas? I know many people would have fought. Others would have run away, cried, or anything but play along. But what choice did I have? I had never been in a fight in my life. He was clearly much more imposing than me. And to top it off, he was totally crazy. I didn't know what he was capable of. For this Christmas, I want something much better than all the other kids. I want a lot of bicycles. I want a robot. I also want a TV. While he was talking to me, I could only hold back my tears. I was terrified for my life. For the moment, I had it under control. But who knows how this man might behave. What if this was all a lie? What if he was a killer pretending to be a child to torture me before killing me? I cleared my head of all thoughts. At this point, it no longer made any sense to imagine the worst. I focused on the man again. And when I did, I wished I was still trapped in my thoughts. Hey, Santa. Can you tell me why my parents are dead? Oh, look, it's hard to explain. 
Every Christmas, I ask you for things, but you never bring them to me. You took my parents away from me when I was a kid, and I've been in the doctor's house for years. I don't want the bicycle anymore. I want you to bring me my parents. Look, if your parents are dead, I don't think they can... Before I finished the sentence, I noticed that something was wrong. The air was thicker. My body felt stiffer. Suddenly I was overcome with a feeling of terror that I never had before. As I looked at the man's face, it had changed. He was furious. He no longer had that childlike expression. He now looked like a monster. His eyes were frozen on me. His head was shaking and even though this month was closed, I could feel his teeth grinding. At that moment, I realized what was about to happen. His hands were stiff and open, ready for a quick move. I knew if I gave the wrong answer, I was going to die. Listen, I think I can get your parents back, and long before Christmas. You just have to wait for me in this room. I'll come and get them. I made a move to stand up, and he stood up with me. He wasn't answering me anymore. He was just staring at me. Very scared, I walked towards the door without losing sight of him. He didn't stand still. He was following me. Hey, you can't come with me, okay? Children can't see Santa's magic. Just wait for me here. Ignoring me, he kept walking behind me. Each step felt more oppressive than the last. I felt like at any moment he was going to jump in. He was going to attack me and do who knows what. My body was numb and I felt like I was dying inside. Once I got to the door, he stopped. I opened it slowly, but he slammed it shut and stared at me. His face was in front of mine once again. I did my best not to cry, to hold my nerves and just handle the situation as best I could. After a few seconds, the man took his hand off the door and let me go. Once he did this, I ran as fast as I could. I alerted the police and I ran home, crying. The nightmare was over. The next day, I asked the police officer at the mall what had happened, and he told me everything. Once they got to the room, he was there, waiting. He put up no resistance and was arrested. And shortly after, he was taken to the nearby mental hospital from which he had escaped after beating a guard to death during the night. As they took him away, all he did was ask if Santa had lied to him. Since the cops didn't answer him, he grimaced in anger and kept walking. That was my last day as a mall Santa. As far as I know, the man is probably still in the psychiatric hospital, but imagine if he escapes. The first thing he'll do is get revenge on Santa Claus for lying to him. And when that happens, I don't want to be inside that costume. Hi, my name is Ben, and I've seen Santa, but not the Santa you imagine. It was last year, the night before Christmas, and my mother was putting me to bed. Each year, she'd always say the same thing. Now make sure you stay in bed, honey, or Santa won't come. I would always feel a surge of excitement ripple through me when she talked about Santa. I wanted to meet him so badly, to see him put a present under the tree, and to thank him for doing so. I always felt that Santa gave so much for so little. But if nobody ever sees him, how could they possibly thank him? It was a grave error. I should have stayed in bed. That same Christmas Eve after I heard my parents come up from the stairs and close their door to their bedroom, I remember lying there, unable to sleep. Or rather, that I was refusing to. Instead of sleeping, I lay there imagining Santa, his great white beard flowing in the snowy wind, his red suit glowing in the moonlight, his eyes glistening with the same Christmas joy said to be infused into his gifts. He was what gave my childhood true life when the snow fell and the school days ended. I'm 12 now, so much has changed. During the night, there was a couple quiet knocks and creaks here and there, but nothing to be alarmed of, until just after midnight, one loud bang rang out causing me to spring up from my bed and dash to my bedroom door, opening it as I checked to my left and right, and then to my parents' door in front of me. It was locked. My whole body was consumed by joy. Perhaps it was Santa. 
Finally, I would get to meet him, to watch in awe as he pulled present after present from his sack, placing each one gracefully under the tree. I didn't want to wake my parents, in fear they'd tell me off for being awake. One by one, I carefully placed each foot one after the other, gradually making my way down the stairs, avoiding the creaky spots and the rickety handrail. I could hear rustling noises and subtle taps rippling through the downstairs living room. Must be him. Santa was here. Soon enough, I reached the hallway outside of the living room but stayed standing on the last step of the stairs to avoid the risk of a creaky floorboard waking my parents. Slowly, I peered round into the pitch black where the only light source was the dimly lit Christmas tree that glowed like a distant star in the night sky. Mesmerized by its beauty, I momentarily drifted my concern away from Santa, only to stare at the light from the tree being blocked suddenly by a large, dark figure. I squinted my eyes to try and work out what had just emerged from the darkness. Was it Santa? I had thought. The figure was visibly moving and twisting around in the darkness. I would have switched the light on, but I didn't want to wake my parents. But it wasn't necessary. The light of the Christmas tree began to glow brighter from behind the dark figure, although its white glow had turned to velvet red, revealing a large man wearing a huge red overcoat with black stripes lining his back. It was Santa, I excitedly thought. I remember thinking it was the best to quietly whisper his name to get his attention. Santa. Psst. Santa. All of a sudden, the dark figure stopped all its movements. Instead, it now slowly turned its head toward me. Santa? My eyes widened in horror as I stood there, staring at its eyes transformed from white to a blood-red glow. Its mouth opened into a grin, revealing a wide set of teeth shining in the darkness. The tree behind it began to glow brighter and brighter, revealing what I had once thought to be Santa, instead showing a figure with a grisly gray beard, a set of jagged teeth pointing out from its grinning mouth, and a pair of red eyes in a red suit, tattered and stained all over, with its fingers appearing as claws. I was frozen whilst it finished turning its head, but now it faced me. Suddenly, the grin vanished and the creature simply stood there, glaring at me without any expression. Run, I told myself. Immediately, the creature came stampeding towards me, its weighted footsteps shaking the entire house as I scrambled up the stairs, sprinting into my room and bolting it shut behind me as my parents had done. I could hear it stomping outside of my room as well as the horrific roar it gave out, giving out both murderous intent and perhaps even hunger. It began throwing its body into my door, rapidly breaking it down. Just before it entered, I jumped into my wardrobe, closing the door just as the creature burst through, flinging bits of wood everywhere, with several shards narrowly missing my hiding spot. It dashed in following the entry and stopped in the middle of the room, its head darting all around, searching for me. I was peering through the crack in the door, watching with bated breath as the creature came to an abrupt stop with all its movements. It was facing away. Had I escaped? I breathed a mild sigh of relief, with tears of adrenaline seeping from my eyes, until I reopened them, now staring at the creature. Its eyes staring at me, a grin beginning to form on its face. It had found me. Suddenly, there came the voice of my parents, bursting in through the debris of the door, screaming at Santa, his eyes flashing white. The creature's grin vanished, and it leapt out of my bedroom window. I heard a colossal stampede of stomps hurry down the street outside, along with the sounds of glass shattering on the concrete below. Finally, the house went silent. The sun had begun to rise on the horizon as I clambered out of the wardrobe, 
hurriedly getting up and running to my parents, hurling myself into their open arms, telling them all that I could through a flood of tears. Looking up, however, I realized neither of them were listening. Instead, there was a deathly horror present in the expression on their faces as I stared at the smashed window, at what rubble was left of it, as well as the obliterated door behind us. Then they turned to each other, alarmed. All at once, they raced me down the stairs, bursting into the living room, flicking the lights on behind them. All three of us stared in bewilderment under the tree. There sat one singular present, a black box with red ribbons tied around it. Carefully, my mother wandered over to it, picking it up and opening it. Her expression froze as she stared into the box, dropping it to the floor in shock. The open box landed, and the inside was now facing towards my father and me. Inside was a red X, and a note that read, See you next year. Merry Christmas. I'm writing this that same following year, and it's Christmas Eve. Lily was sick, and I knew every Christmas with her was a present in itself. But with every year, it got harder. I wanted to give her all I had, even when I possessed little more than the clothes on my back due to our situation. I was the full-time caretaker of my terminal twin sister, and well, she could barely leave the bed some days. It was sad, especially because I felt like there just wasn't enough I could give my sister to make up for all the bad that was happening to us. One night, I flipped through her diary. It was a habit to make sure she'd taken all her pills. When I found something odd, a letter to Santa. Does she still write them? Poor thing, I'll make sure that she gets to see Santa and I will do everything I can to help her survive. But I was broke. I was so broke that I could barely afford to call three numbers I found online. Two turned me down. One was too expensive, the other too busy. The last one was Jeff. His ad was a bit different from the others. It popped up as I was about to give up on my search, to be honest. Jeff sounded a bit too young to play Santa, close in age to me and my sister, but he was confident he would be able to fool her. You know, it's not hard to sound a bit older. You just have to drop your voice a bit, make it raspier. For a second, a shiver went down my spine. There was something dangerous to the way he spoke. He was confident, perhaps, a lot more than I have ever been. Maybe that should have been the first warning sign. He was perfect. He was a good actor, just charismatic enough to pass as the real thing, but he was cheap, like way too cheap, and he was even willing to help us for free after I explained everything to him. I couldn't ask for money. All I want is for you and your sister to have the brightest of days. That should have been the second red flag. Many organizations have rejected Lily's wishes because she was far too old. There wasn't much to do for her, and while kids who still had hope needed them more, I guess. An adult woman who's had a rough life deserved only pity for most people. Christmas Eve came. Jeff asked if he could drop by then so that he could spend Christmas Day with his family. I whispered, of course, into the phone, grinning from ear to ear as I eyed Lily's sleeping form. She was going to be so happy. I could barely wait. I'd always shared my secrets with her, but this one needed to be a surprise. Maybe, maybe if she knew, she'd have seen the signs. The knock on the door came at 8 an hour earlier than I'd expected. Still, I shot off the couch I'd slept on like a rocket. My features pulled into the happiest smile I could muster. Joy for Lily was gathering in my chest, but there was this inexplicable worry, too. After all, this was the smallest thing on her bucket list. What if she hated it? What if she... Lay? Who's that? My twin's voice broke me out of my thoughts as I stood in front of the door about to let her present in. No one, I sang as I opened the door. Something was off. 
The man in front of me was wearing a Santa costume, right? But he didn't really look like the person in his ad. He looked older, with dark eyes that had me faltering for a second. Are you sure? Is this one of your crazy surprises? You know that I don't want you to spend money on... (laughs) The voice was the same, at least. Jeff stood in front of me, but being under the messy white beard he'd plastered across his face, he smelled of beer and cigarettes, but at least he turned up. Come on in. She doesn't know you're here yet. I winked at him, mustering up all my festive joy to cut through the surprise his appearance had caused me. Judging a book by its cover was never fair, anyway. Ho, 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 ho. I had a hunch it was a surprise. The way he talked was odd. There was a slow drawl to his voice, each word being dragged out just a bit too long until it sounded almost awkward. Again, I shook it off. Sis, I'm coming, Lily. I motioned for Jeff to follow me as quietly as he could. He nodded, though, for a second. His eyes didn't meet mine. Never turn your back to a stranger. My mother's words popped into my head. I rarely thought of her, but... Something about the situation caused me to remember the little nuggets of wisdom she liked to tell me and Lily when we were younger. Perhaps part of me enjoyed breaking the promises I'd made her all those years ago. Still, it didn't take long for me to regret my actions. Something cold pressed against my neck, and the second I took a step forward, what the? Listen to me. I'll play nice with your little sister. Give her some presents. Whatever. When we're done, you'll follow me to my car without a word. It was a threat. I wanted to ask, and what if I don't do it? But I somehow felt that was even more dangerous. And so, I nodded. Good girl. You know, you should feel thankful that I accept such a scrawny thing as payment for being a good Samaritan. Are you sure it's your sister who's sick and not you? Tears quickly flooded my eyes, but I shook my head a few times to get rid of them. I looked around, desperate for a way out, but I found nothing. Our place was humble at best, and Lily was very sick. The only way I could keep her comfortable was by spending all of what we had on her. Sometimes I felt selfish even for just eating. Lay, follow me. I cleared my throat and led the man into Lily's room. I expected her to smile, but she didn't. What the heck? Surprise! I wanted you to finally meet Santa like you always wanted. (laughs) Oh, I... Thank you. Lily sounded unsure. Even when she finally smiled as Jeff stepped close to her, it never quite reached her eyes. I never got to ask why. Half an hour later, I was in Jeff's car, hands and feet bound. Just so you know, if you scream for help, my buddies will get your sister. There's no way you can escape from me. I wanted him to disappear, but I knew it was helpless, and it was all my fault. <laughs>